Hey, my name is Rachel, glad you could make it. All right, so this is week two on the Fiber Fuel 28 day plan. If you haven't seen week one, go ahead and watch it. It's in the description for you below. You know, week one went great and moving on to week two, you know, I don't have a lot to say here at the top of the video. So let's just get into it. I will show you all of the meals that I've eaten this week. And then at the end, I will let you know how it went. This is day one breakfast. So this is tofu scramble bowl. So this has like sweet potato, kale, and then you know scrambled tofu and then we have a citrus and mint salad this might be like a five or a four out of ten i don't know it's not very flavorful so i don't really like scrambled tofu that much to begin with i'm not the biggest fan of mint and things but this is okay it's like a six out of ten you know like i like the fruit lunch is red lentil curry soup with some sourdough toast just for the record this recipe made a truly astronomical amount of soup i have a humongous bowl full of more i don't know what i'm gonna do with all of it it's not an amazing soup but it is it is a good soup i think this is about a seven um i'm worried i'm gonna get incredibly sick of it as time goes on dinner this is lentil walnut tacos it has that same creamy cilantro sauce from last week and these are corn tortillas again i don't know how to make corn tortillas soft enough so they don't break but we're gonna try it i feel like i know what they were trying to do with this like the sauce carries it the the filling itself is not as good as that tempeh filling from last week I don't know. I mean, it's still tacos, you know, like there are six, honestly. For the day two breakfast, I'm having simple overnight oats. So there's chia seeds in here, almond milk, hemp seeds, blueberries, banana. Oh, it's really good. Seven out of 10. I might prefer overnight oats to regular oatmeal. Lunch, so we have leftover mushroom risotto and then some of that down and dirty kale salad. I've already had both of these. I love them both, so let's give this entire meal a 10 out of 10. For dinner, I'm having the butternut squash and quinoa chili. And also I'm gonna have just more for dessert after these uh, chickpea cookie dough balls, which I've already had. This chili has like, you know, butternut squash, quinoa, tomatoes, zucchini, peppers, just a whole lot of veggies. There's no beans in it, which is kind of weird for a chili. I give it a six out of 10. So these, I was always skeptical of chickpea cookie dough things. I just thought that sounded sad, but I tried them because they're one of the snack recipes this week. And it's like chickpeas, maple syrup, peanut butter, vanilla extract. And then I use the Enjoy Life uh, vegan chocolate chips. It doesn't taste like chickpeas at all, I swear to God. Like an eight out of 10. Don't knock until you tried it, folks. Breakfast is the pumpkin pie for breakfast smoothies. This has bananas, coconut milk, pumpkin puree, pumpkin pie spice, hemp seeds. That really does taste like pumpkin pie. It's a little too thin though. They use like a full cup of milk. Like eight out of 10. I've made other like pumpkin pie smoothies and this is the best one I've had. This is really good. For lunch, it is that daily salad from week one again with the oil-free orange dressing and then leftover red lentil curry soup. And it has gotten pretty solid. Give this whole meal a seven. For dinner, I'm having lentil walnut sweet potato tacos. So it's like the same filling and fixings as I had the other day with the corn tortillas, but this, it just calls for sweet potato. Really tried to make it like a tortilla. This is just like for the sweet potato toast sort of thing. These actually stay together better than the tortillas. Um, this is like a seven, seven and a half out of 10. Breakfast is a superfood smoothie. Had this recipe the last week. Um, I did use some mixed berries instead of just strawberries. Seven out of 10. For lunch, I'm having the miso mushroom and soba bowl. This is actually supposed to be for dinner, but just with my timing, it made more sense for me to have this now. But uh, yeah, it has some soba noodles, which are made of buckwheat, which is something that I know I have a reaction to. So we'll see. All sorts of veggies in here. It's tossed in a little bit of like a sauce made of miso and bio broth. I feel like it needed more of the sauce it had you made. As is, it's like a really soft seven, but I'm gonna add some tamari to it. Definitely better. Dinner is all leftovers, so it's the leftover butternut squash and quinoa chili and the down and dirty kale salad. The salad is all right. It's uh, definitely tastes leftover. Tomorrow, I'm guessing it would be gross. Brings it down to like a six. Still not a big fan of this chili, so it's also a six. It's a meh meal for me. 
breakfast is the simple overnight oats again i'm just having them with strawberries six and a half out of ten i don't know i'm not really in the mood for oats lunch is some more of that daily salad with the same orange tahini dressing and then some sourdough toast with pumpkin hummus salad seven out of ten it honestly just tastes like regular hummus like there's a lot of cumin in it and that's all you really taste so give that also like a seven out of ten Dinner is sag tofu with some rice. This is wild rice and sag tofu. It's like an Indian inspired dish. There's spinach and coconut milk and a whole lot of different spices. I don't think I've ever had it before. Maybe like at a restaurant, seven out of 10, I guess. For breakfast, I made the super seedy breakfast porridge. Had this a few times in week one. I did switch it up. I used coconut milk instead of almond milk. I used pumpkin pie spice instead of the other spices. And I would give this an eight out of 10 for oatmeal. I like this version a lot. Lunch is leftover sog tofu, and I just toasted a piece of sourdough with it because I thought that sounded really good. This recipe has grown on me. As I was eating it last night, I realized I uh, did it a great injustice. I think it was just too hot when I first tried it. I gave it honestly an eight out of 10, and I think I'm gonna keep this recipe around. Like I'll keep it in the rotation. It's very delicious. For dinner, I'm having some lentil sweet potato stew. I'll be honest, I'm getting pretty sick of lentils and soups and curry type of soups. I feel like that's all this week is but let's try it it's pretty good i feel like if i wasn't so sick of curry powder at this point like i would be more into it but for now it's a six out of ten also i made this dessert recipe it's chocolate mousse it's like a tofu mousse like more of like a pudding vibe it's really chocolatey and rich. Honestly, I feel like it's a seven out of 10. I feel like people would really like this. It's just, it's really rich for me at the moment. Breakfast today is actually supposed to be the gluten-free pancakes, which I did make last week and are good, but I still have all this leftover tofu scramble from earlier this week. So I figured I would just eat that today so it doesn't go to waste. Five and a half out of 10. I'm just really not in the mood to make pancakes, you know? Lunch is no tuna sunflower salad on sourdough toast. So this is like a blend of sunflower seeds and different herbs like chives and parsley and mustard. It looks really good. And then a side of the citrus mint salad, which I had earlier. It doesn't taste like tuna, but it tastes really good. I'd give this an eight out of 10. I might add like some nori in it next time to give it a little more of like a fishy flavor. The citrus salad still isn't my favorite. I'm not really a big fan of the mint, like I said, so that's like a six. Dinner is leftover lentil sweet potato stew and some of that down and dirty kale salad, which I've had a bunch. Listen, this stew isn't bad. I'm just so sick of curry powder at this point. I don't know, I'm like a low six. And the kale salad's also a sick. Again, I feel like I've had this recipe quite a bit and I'm getting a little fatigued by it, not as excited. And that was week two of Fiber Fueled. This week was more challenging um, in terms of like symptoms. I felt like I was really flying high week one um, and then week two, First of all, external factors was on my period for most of this week, which is a time that does like trigger my inflammatory symptoms already. Regardless, let's talk about how I was feeling. I was having, you know, eczema on my fingers again, not horrible, but some itchiness, some, you know, bumps kind of emerging that did die down as well as having more of like a flare. Like I get like itchy eczema scalp at times. So that was happening. And then uh, going to the bathroom was a little different you know i was already having loose stools tend to have loose stools this was looser um typically in the mornings you know i would go several times i wasn't like running to the bathroom or like feeling i was gonna <laughs> have an accident but you know definitely not normal stools and then also i was just seeing skin in my face again i'm wearing makeup but having more redness, was having some like smaller pimples pop up. I think overall I was having some, you know, tummy distress and increase in inflammation this week. There were a whole lot of lentils. I feel like there was definitely more like soy and tofu this week. I didn't notice like I felt particularly bad after having tofu at all, but it still like isn't my favorite food to eat. Do you wanna say there are some like matcha drinks that are supposed to be had this week and in the weeks to come. Uh, I typically avoid caffeine. I just, it really disrupts my sleep and can trigger anxiety for me. In the book he talks about, he's like, you know, caffeine isn't a necessity thing, it's, but um, he does say, you know, certain people are sensitive to caffeine. So if you're sensitive, 
don't have caffeine because it's like you can't I don't think there's like decaffeinated matcha and I'm not particularly interested in seeking out decaffeinated matcha because it's just like it's not essential I do for like the increased like little pimples I do feel like the chocolate chips that I had maybe partially to blame because there's like refined sugar in those I do notice for myself that like if I have refined sugar I can get like little pimples I really did like those chickpea balls I don't know I wonder if I'll be able to get to a point where I can have refined sugar and not notice increase in pimples but also it's like refined sugar it's an unnecessary food but it does taste good also the recipes this week felt more repetitive like I said a lot of curry flavored things I feel like I got really sick of curry and I have leftovers still I'm trying to finish and like just get myself to eat that's all curry stuff I feel like there was quite a bit of quinoa and I do feel like I have some issues with quinoa but I feel like my headaches they weren't worse this week at all just again kind of mild headaches sort of my normal headache I'm not noticing they get worse after I have the oats or um, any certain grain specifically once my period was like over even honestly on my period like I wasn't getting bloated my stomach has been pretty uh, flat which is I think different from week one so yeah it was just kind of a weird mix that like I was having kind of some bathroom issues but I wasn't feeling very bloated I feel like my skin it's not like you know it keeps getting worse it just kind of like ooh, it's a little more red some more pimples and then we'll see but also again towards the last few days of this I feel like my stools are not as liquid anymore I feel like I was adjusting a little bit better now but I'm gonna keep going with it there was nothing like horrible that happened and again I'm introducing new foods, different combinations of foods. So I'm not like surprised that some issues are coming up. Mental health, again, I'm not really expecting a big change in my mental health at this point. But, you know, if I can get improved gut health overall, that could help my brain regulate itself a little bit better. But again, you know, there's emotional factors that I feel are independent of my biochemistry of how I'm doing and you know as well as like over a, a decade of emotional health issues so I I'm heading into week three. I plan to do week four unless something truly horrendous happens in week three. But yeah, I'm taking uh, today off between to finish some leftovers, go get my groceries, try to do some more meal prep. I feel like there still are a few recipes from this week that I'll definitely want to keep around. I'm still enjoying cooking. I feel like I've really gotten the hang of things. I'm not really feeling overwhelmed by the cooking. I'm able to prep things ahead of time. You know, nothing too labor intensive with any of these recipes, truly. All right, I think that's about it. I'll be moving forward with week three so expect that video if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up so i know you liked it you can subscribe to my channel we're putting out new videos every monday and sometimes thursday leave me a comment tell me what you thought about all this going on right here and as always thank you so much for being here goodbye it's sweet potato toast for breakfast still loving that sweet potato toast and regular toast having sourdough bread has truly been such a joy to have bread and toast after just avoiding it for so long and i'm like should i have avoided it did i need to not really it seems because it doesn't seem to bother me that much the more you know